Hi and welcome to today's episode which is all about having a go at making another type of gnocchi. A few months ago I made some gluten-free gnocchi using gram flour and tapioca starch. I used regular potatoes for that and at the time I thought oh it might be worth trying that with sweet potatoes. So that's what we're going to do today. Gnocchi's a little, it's basically like a dumpling I guess, sort of made typically with potatoes. So I'm going to have a go at using sweet potatoes this time just to see what the texture and taste are like. I thought it was worth a try. Once I decided on trying it I thought I need to have a sauce to go with that and started reverse engineering it. So I thought sweet potatoes, sweet. So I want something to kind of balance that out a bit. So I thought, what can I do? Something acidic might be quite nice. And then remembered when I worked in the restaurants, they used to make sauce vierge to go with cod, I think. Uh, so we're gonna have a go at making that. It's a really simple, nice little sauce to make. So it's a good one to have in your uh, arsenal. So we'll make the sauce first, because then that can just sit and be kind of infusing all the flavors while we work on the gnocchi. I've been soaking some of the dried onions for about 45 minutes, just while I was setting up. I mixed some vermouth and a squeeze of lemon juice with some boiling water, added in the onions. So I'm just gonna drain these off. If it's the equivalent of maybe one shallot or maybe half a small red onion. I've used the dried onion just for ease and because I need to use up the stuff that I've got. If you want to do it with red onion or white onion, what I'd maybe do is slice it quite finely and then blot it on a piece of paper towel because that'll take some of the heat and aggressive flavour that's in there and leave you just a much milder kind of onion vibe. I'm just drizzling about three or four tablespoons of olive oil, extra virgin olive oil, into a saucepan. Got a few little tomatoes that my neighbour gave me, and then I might have to add in a few more, just because these have got some bits that I'll have to cut away. So anything like that, I'll just cut that out. So I think for this size, I'll do that into three. Then into three again. And then just dice those down a bit. I'm leaving the seeds in because I don't mind that, but if you want to take them out, feel free, that's fine. I think that's actually enough tomato. I think that should be fine. So I'll put those in the pan. I'm gonna use some capers in this, maybe a half a tablespoon. They've just got a really nice kind of zingy, slightly sour, tangy kind of note to them. These are very small ones. These are cappuccino type, but I am just gonna go through and chop that a little bit more. And that should be fine into the pan. I'll add some fresh lemon juice into the pan as well. I might do half to start with, and then I can always add a bit more at the end. So squeeze the juice in. Then I'll add the onion pieces in. I'm gonna add a little bit of black pepper, not much. And I'm not gonna put any salt in there because the capers are in there, and the capers are in brine, so they don't really need any salt. But if you're not using capers, you might wanna add a bit of salt, but that's, you know, do it to your taste. And I'll give that a stir. With the sauce vierge, you can have it cold or warm. I'm going to warm it through slightly as I'm pan frying the gnocchi. And then right before serving, I've got about a tablespoon of chopped chives and a tablespoon of torn basil leaves. So I'll add those in right before serving, because otherwise they wilt and go a bit, you know, the flavour gets a bit lost. I'll give this a very quick try, see if it needs anything immediately. Mm. <laughs> Lots of zing here, which is gonna be perfect with a sweet potato. Mm. On to making the gnocchi. Microwaved is around 800 grams of sweet potato. Skin on and everything. As ever, I'm all about the shortcuts. I just chopped the sweet potato down into small pieces and then microwaved it at five minutes, stirred it five minutes and then another five. So it took 15 minutes altogether. You just need to be able to slide the tip of a knife into it without any resistance. That's when you know it's nice and cooked. You could potentially bake them. It's gonna take quite a while but I'd leave them whole, maybe in half, and then scrape it all out once it's baked from the skin. You could steam them or boil them. I mean, boiling them, the trouble is you're gonna introduce a lot of water and then you then have to start adding in lots of flour. So yeah, if you can leave them intact and then boil it that way, maybe in half at the most. Or air fry, you know, cut it into wedges maybe and air fry it that way. I've left the skin on because I'm gonna put it through the potato ricer. So that's the potato ricer. Looks just like a garlic press, like a massive <laughs> garlic press. So I'm just gonna fill that with the sweet potato pieces. Once the chamber's full, just put the top down and then squidge it through. And that leaves you with just the skins that you can then just pull out. Just means you don't have to spend time peeling the sweet potatoes, which is always a bonus. That's all the sweet potato pressed. I'm just gonna clean the press straight away because otherwise the holes get really blocked up. This is the first time doing gnocchi with sweet potatoes. So this is very much on the fly 
kind of thing in terms of how much flour I'm gonna have to use. I've got 125 grams of tapioca starch, which is just over a cup. I think it's like a cup and one tablespoon. I used someone else's recipe for the potato gnocchi, so I'm not 100% sure why they went for tapioca. Um, I think it's because it's got some stretch to it, whereas cornstarch is kind of quite crumbly and short. So this has got a nice bit of stretch, like you use it in vegan cheese making, that kind of thing. I've weighed out 200 grams of gram flour. This is a mixture of chickpea and split yellow peas. Um, but yeah, just any flour you like, really. I thought about doing it with wheat flour, but didn't have any just plain. I only had bread flour, and I thought that just might be a bit too heavy. I'll do two thirds of the tapioca to start with and a third of the gram flour. Definitely sieve the gram flour because you end up with these lumps that you just can't get back out again. So I'll mix this together. So it is very wet still. So I think I'll do the rest of the tapioca and maybe another little bit of the chickpea flour, the gram flour. We want this to come together as a kind of workable dough. So we're getting there, but it's still very soft. So I'll put in the rest of the chickpea flour and then I might have to add some more. I'm gonna add in half a teaspoon of salt, just for a bit of extra flavor. So that's had all of the tapioca and all of the gram flour, but the sweet potato is much wetter than the regular potato was. So I think it's just gonna need more flours to kind of dry it out a little bit and get it together as a dough. Do another few tablespoons of tapioca. Yeah, so perhaps baking the sweet potato is a better way of doing it because that is gonna dry them out a little bit. Do more gram flour. I haven't weighed that because it's gonna really depend on your sweet potatoes. Just do it until it's until you get into a firm ball. Good workout for your arms, this one, my goodness. You could probably do this in the food processor if you've got like kneading blades on there and then just add things through the top. So it is starting to come together. It will form a ball, but it's a touch sticky. So I might add a little bit more powders. So I've got maybe three tablespoons of the gram flour there. Another few tablespoons of the tapioca. It's a bit less sticky now, so I might go in with my hands. So again, I've rolled it into a ball. It is a little bit sticky still, but it's not nearly as bad as it was. Another couple of tablespoons of tapioca and another few of the gram flour. This is feeling positive. It's kind of one mass without it sticking so badly. Next stage is to roll the gnocchi into little shapes. I'm gonna use a gnocchi board. So it's got little grooves on there just to get a nice bit of texture on the outside. Feel free to just roll them into little balls, that's fine. You can also roll them into kind of sausages and just cut pieces off that way and just have them like that. I'm gonna freeze most of mine. So I've lined a baking sheet with some greaseproof paper and then I'll freeze them in a single layer. And then once they're frozen, they can go in a big Ziploc bag. Still got some of the other batch that I made. The only problem is, is it does start breaking down after a few months. I think I did this maybe six months ago, something like that. So yeah, it's not something that'll keep for months on end if you're using the gluten-free flours. Not sure if wheat flour would be different, probably because the glute would hold it together a bit better. The first time that I did the gluten-free gnocchi, I did roll everything into sausages and then cut pieces off and shape them from there. The sausages didn't hold together very well. It kept falling apart. So I just thought it was more hassle than it needed to be. So I just took chunks off as I needed it. Got a bit of tapioca on my hands just to stop everything sticking. Take a piece about that big, roll that. Probably just over a teaspoon of mixture, something like that. I'm just gonna roll it down the board. So you end up with these lovely little grooves on there and the sauce kind of rests in there. I'm gonna finish rolling all that mixture, which is gonna take quite a while. So we'll see you back when everything's done. So that's the gnocchi all rolled and ready for a bath. So I've got a large pan of heavily salted water. That's gonna get some extra flavor into the gnocchi. There needs to be a rolling boil. Then I'm gonna get the sauce vierge onto a very low heat. Mine goes up to nine. I think I'll put it on four because we're not really trying to fry anything or boil anything. We just want a little bit of gentle warmth under there just to help kind of lift the flavors out a little bit. And then I've got the herbs ready to go. I've put them there so I don't forget to put them in. Once the gnocchi's boiled, I'm gonna drop them into a pan with some vegan butter just to get them a bit crunchy on the outside. I'm gonna lower them into the water on a spider just to make it a little bit less aggressive, just so hopefully they'll they won't fall apart. <laughs> this is the danger part, you see, because I've got no idea what's gonna happen when they hit the water. But this is how we find out. So I've got them there on the spider, so I'll just lower those in. And then load it up again. Just keep going in and kind of nudging them apart just to make sure nothing sticks together. They're all floating on the surface now. 
need to keep you backed away otherwise you get all steamy. So I'm lifting them out and then dropping them into the butter. Just moving them around a bit. Have a quick look at the sauce. You can see that the olive oil kind of mingles with the juices from the tomato and the lemon. But yeah, that's delicious. <laughs> I really wish I could do smelly vision for you because oh, the smells coming out of this pan are sublime. So these will probably take, I don't know, six minutes, six to eight minutes just to get a bit of colour on every side. So the gnocchi is all pan fried and ready from eating. <laughs> so there's a nice bit of crunch on the outside, so that should be very pleasant to eat. Try a bit on its own without the sauce. Mmm, that's quite nice. It's heavier than the potato one was. But I suspect that's because I had to put way more flowers in there. I don't know if I'll be able to get that in shot very well for you. But it's kind of a little bit bready, but not unpleasant. That was very nice. The sweet potato sweetness isn't as strong as I thought it would be. Again, that could be because I've put so many more bulking agents in there. There's plenty there for your back teeth to work on. Mm, try a bit with the sauce. Mmm, that's incredible. Mmm. The sauce is just so bright and vibrant. Mmm, yes. <laughs> the gnocchi's got kind of a, a sort of savoury mellowness, but then the sauce on there just brightens everything up and gives it some real zingy. Ooh, <laughs> definitely making the sauce lots more. Because <laughs> that would work as like a dip for nachos or on tofu, seitan, that kind of thing. Just a really nice, quick little sauce to make. I think rolling that big mess out took 20 minutes, something like that, but that would be much quicker if you weren't so bothered about the ridges on the outside. If you haven't got a gnocchi board, but you want the ridges, you can roll it over two forks. I'll insert a clip from the other video so you can see how to do that. It's very fiddly though, <laughs> which is why I caved and bought the board. I just picked it up. I think it was off Amazon, but you can get them on Etsy, have a look on there, eBay, that kind of thing. I'm wondering if you could use that kind of basis for different types of vegetables. We're in pumpkin season now, so maybe pumpkin gnocchi. Hmm, you might need to put a regular potato in there as well, just to kind of hold things together. I think that'd be really good. Yeah, I might do a bit more experimentation with that. Try different pureed veg, a bit of potato, mm, and some starches. I'll also play around with different flowers, see what the different flowers do to it. It'd be interesting with a whole grain, because you get the little bits of germ in there, so that might be kind of nice bits to chew on. Mm. Yeah, very happy I tried that out. <laughs> Hit subscribe and tap the bell icon for more sneaky and fun ways of getting in your five a day. And then head over to this one.